Good evening from New York. This is Thursday, October 14th, 19 days until the 2010 midterm elections. I have Sean Hannity in my pocket, and I can go on his show and raise money by attacking you guys. Christine O'Donnell speaking to GOP insiders last week in Washington, according to two of them, as sourced by Howard Feynman in a story breaking tonight at the Huffington Post. Our fifth story in the countdown, Howard joins us with more in a moment. The cynical and seemingly counterproductive revelation coming after O'Donnell's second debate in as many days with her Democratic opponent for the Delaware Senate seat, Chris Coons. After today, she went on Hannity's radio show, where she could be heard raising money by attacking those guys. 19 days left and 19 points down and unable to name a recent Supreme Court decision with which she disagrees. Before you joke that it sounds like O'Donnell was prepped for her debates by Sarah Palin's campaign team, she was. O'Donnell and Coons lunching together this afternoon in Wilmington before their Rotary Club debate, the content of that momentarily. First, Greg Sargent's plumb line now reporting that in advance of last night's University of Delaware debate, Ms. O'Donnell was schooled by lobbyist Randy Schooneman and the web editor of the Weekly Standard, Michael Goldfarb. That's, those would be the same Schooneman and Goldfarb who worked for the 2008 McCain presidential campaign. That's Randy Schooneman pictured next to Sarah Palin before her 2008 debate with Joe Biden. According to Goldfarb, Palin Palin personally recommended her team to O'Donnell, and the O'Donnell campaign again took Palin's advice. When the lights went on, O'Donnell claimed her opponent would dramatically raise their taxes. Coons responded he is for extending the Bush tax cuts for the overwhelming majority of Americans. Coons tried to stay about de debt and deficit, but O'Donnell was eager to bring up her skit show celebrity. There's been lots of discussion in the national media uh, about things my opponent has said or done that I frankly think are a distraction <laughs> from the core issues that Delawareans ask about. Ask both of us about. You're just what jealous you that you were on Washington? Saturday Night Live. <laughs> I'm, I'm dying to see who's going to play me, Christine. <laughs> She's not a witch, but she is thrilled to be portrayed as one on TV. Asked about some of the more controversial Christianity-based comments she has made, O'Donnell, who said four years ago that she heard the audible voice of God encouraging her to run to, for office, insisted the Constitution, not her faith, would guide her as a senator. Regardless of my personal faith, when I go down to Washington, D.C., it is the Constitution that I will defend. And it is by the Constitution by, that I will make all of my decisions, and that will be the standard bearer for every piece of legislation that I will vote on. I'm interested in hearing whether it's the Constitution as passed by the founders, the Constitution of 1920, 1930, the Constitution of 1975, the Constitution of today. Because to me, protecting a woman's right to choose, protecting reproductive freedom, um, and making sure that we've got on the record Ms. O'Donnell's views on things like prayer, um, abortion, um, evolution, uh, is important. These aren't just random statements on some late-night TV show. These are relevant to her service in the United States Senate, what sort of judges she would confirm, what sort of issues she would take up. I'm someone who stands firmly behind the Constitution as it stands today. O'Donnell did not pick her Constitution of choice, and on her social views, O'Donnell dodged even when Wolf asked about monkeys. Do you believe evolution is a myth? I believe that the local, I was talking about what a local school taught, and that should be taught, that should be decided on the local community. But please let me respond well, to what he just said. We will let you respond, but answer the question. Do you local, believe evolution is a myth? Local, local schools should make that decision. I made that remark based what do you on believe? what do you believe? What, do you what believe? I believe is irrelevant. Why is because it irrelevant? What, if because what I will support, want to know what, you what I will support in Washington D.C. is the ability for the local school system to decide what is taught in their in their classrooms. A candidate in a debate just said, "Quote: What I believe is irrelevant." Asked about the Supreme Court, and apparently Palin's people forgot to show Ms. O'Donnell the tape of the Sarah Palin Katie Couric interview. We've talked religion. about the Supreme Court, and obviously a United States senator has the opportunity to determine, in a way, the makeup of that court. So what opinions of late that have come from our high court do you most object to? Oh, gosh. Um, give me a specific one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, I can't because the, I need you to tell me which ones you object to. Um, I'm very sorry, right off the top of my head. I know that there are a lot, but uh, I'll put it up on my website, I promise you. By the way, as of this hour, 
It's not on her website either. Today, O'Donnell and Coons picking up where they left off. This time, the candidates were allowed to ask questions directly of one another. Coons going after the social conservatism O'Donnell is trying to suppress. You are long on the record repeatedly opposing a woman's right to choose, even in those cases where a woman is a victim of rape or incest. Where do you really stand on the constitutionality of Roe versus Wade and on the issue of abortion in all cases? You can recognize, if you are intellectually honest about the constitutionality of Roe versus Wade, that it's a violation of the Tenth Amendment. So I support overturning Roe versus Wade for that reason. Finally, asked today to say something nice about one another, O'Donnell said Coons gave good answers to questions. Mr. Coons was then given two minutes for his response. My opponent, Christine O'Donnell, is someone who has shown remarkable persistence. She's run for the United States Senate three times in the last five years. And her passionate commitment, her passionate commitment to the conservative social causes that she's championed for her adult life, I respect. I think that combination of passion and persistence has served her well. Thank you. You didn't use your whole two minutes. You have extra time. <laughs> As promised, let's call in Howard Feynman, Huffington Post senior political editor and MSNBC political analyst. Howard, good evening. Hi, Keith. The debate's in a moment, but first your story tonight. I have Sean Hannity in my pocket, and I can go on his show and raise money by attacking you guys. If you're the outsider and you're ahead with 19 days left, it might be a little tacky to thumb your nose at your own party, but at least you'd be ahead. Uh, yes. Is there any logic to doing it when you're the outsider and you're down by 19 with 19 to play? Well, there's logic to uh, to her. I mean, this is the way she's thought from the beginning. Uh, she's run against the party. I don't think she even wanted Mike Castle's endorsement. You know, the, the moderate that she ran against in the primary, she complained that he didn't endorse her. I don't even think she wanted it. I think she's also trying to make the best of a bad situation, uh, Keith, because it's not just the, the party officials here. It's the unofficial party officials like Carl Rove, who's running American Crossroads. I checked in with his operation today and with him. Even after these very impressive debate performances, uh, they haven't changed their mind about supporting her, and they're not. So she's not getting any money from the big shots. So she's using Sean Hannity, as she said. At least she told these guys, you know, I've got him in my pocket. I can go on his show, and I can run against you to raise money. They said, fine, go ahead, do it. If you raise enough and bring it down to a few points within a few days of the election, uh, maybe we'll support you some directly. But they don't expect that to happen. Uh, the Associated Press headline today, O'Donnell dodges evangelical issues in Senate race. Is the AP, indeed, are all of us missing the point here? Is the content of the debates at all relevant to Christine O'Donnell's supporters? And is the outcome of the election even relevant to the long-term future of Christine O'Donnell from Christine O'Donnell's viewpoint right now? Well, I, I think in terms of her supporters, no. they don't. The, her supporters, and I met a lot of them when I was up there covering the primary, but this is sort of dog whistle politics to them. They, they hear at a higher level. They see her. They know her. They believe in her. They believe that, you know, she was evasive on purpose about evolution, but they believe she's with them on that, same on abortion. She can talk about the Tenth Amendment. They believe in her, in their heart, in her heart, she's with them. As for, you know, her long-range goal in life, I, I think she, she thinks, based on people I know who have spoken to her, that, you know, she's got a shot here and she's going to pull it off. And I've got to say that strictly on theatrics, not on substance, okay, mm -hmm. but strictly on theatrics, at least last night, you know, Chris Coons, the Democrat, who's way ahead, was took the line of not responding to her, not calling her out, not getting specific in terms of saying what inaccuracies that uh, Christine O'Donnell was putting forth. And, you know, he's taking the risk that it's not going to matter. It might not, but it's risky. Is... Does she believe truly that she has a chance of winning this thing with with some of these uh, obvious gaffes that would have been viewed by people who didn't have an opinion of her going into either of these debates? Well, I, I, I think she thinks so. I don't know how realistic it is, mm -hmm. Keith, obviously. I, I think the not to know a single support a Supreme Court case is devastating. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's an embarrassment beyond words. I did notice between last night's debate and today she did manage to dredge up a reference to the Tenth Amendment regarding constitutional law. So there's that. But, you know, it's, it's cringeworthy to most people, I would say. And I think it's cringeworthy to most independent voters in Delaware and most moderate Republicans, of which there are a lot in Delaware, which is why Karl Rove, who's really running the show from behind the scenes, has stayed away from her and is continuing to stay away from her. Uh, if she was, as you mentioned there, uh, relative to that question about the Supreme Court, if she was 
prepped by those who prepped Sarah Palin, how could they have all missed the possibility of the Supreme Court question? I mean, couldn't they just taught her the words Plessy v. Ferguson and pray there was no follow-up? <laughs> Well, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot to learn in a short space of time, and and one Plessy of the things. V. <laughs> Ferguson. It's three words. <laughs> Write it on your palm. It worked for, for for Mama. Well, one of the things about this year, Keith, where everybody from the outside is knocking on the door, and uh, we're dredging up all kinds of very interesting characters from the periphery of American politics, is that you're going to get people who are almost proud and assert their pride in their lack of knowledge of the political system. Uh, only, only in America would we, would we ever pretend to argue that, that ignorance is somehow a qualification for higher office. But in this year, at this time, mm -hmm. with a lot of people, it is. How many of them are going to get swept up in this tide is the question we've been asking you know, all fall. We're still going to see. In her case... I, I've said from the beginning, I think it's unlikely, and the polls show it's still very unlikely. Why was, ultimately, why was she debating, and why, in, in contrast that to, to why Sharon Angle would be debating? Well, in, in, uh, in, in Christine O'Donnell's case, since you're, you're a good Cornell man, you know the Richard Farina book, you know, I've been down so long, it seems like up to me. <laughs> she, she's debating because... Believe it or not, she needs the exposure because people thought of her, if they thought of her as anything, they thought of her as uh, a character on Saturday Night Live. They thought of her as an ignorant, deadbeat witch, sort of. So <laughs> if, that's, if, if that's your starting point, you may as well debate. It can't get any worse unless you don't know any Supreme Court cases. It's <laughs> an ignorant, uh, ill-informed, underprepared deadbeat <laughs> sort of witch. Howard Feynman, senior political editor of the Huffington Post. Good reporting tonight, and great thanks, as always. Thank you, Keith.